there! This is Brittany from Just Be Crafty. In today's tutorial, I'm going to show you how to do the Harlequin stitch. The Harlequin stitch is a really pretty vintage stitch used in a lot of older afghans. Oftentimes, I've seen this stitch with stripes of orange, green, browns, and black, and thought it might be fun to show off this stitch with some fresh spring colors. The Harlequin stitch is not a difficult stitch, but it does require you to pay particular attention to the first few rows. This tutorial is a little longer than most of my tutorials given the fact that it's just a swatch and not a finished project. I just want to go over those rows in detail. The skill level for this tutorial is for intermediate crocheters and higher. I wouldn't recommend this as your first stitch to learn, unless you're a serious, determined beginner. For the complete list of materials in the written pattern for this stitch, please see the link to my blog post in the description box below. You'll want to follow along with the written pattern as you follow along in the video. Side note, a couple weeks ago I went to see the new Pet Cemetery movie and the little girl in the movie had a Harlequin stitch blanket. It had stripes of pink and white and it was so pretty. It was only on the screen for a couple seconds so most people probably wouldn't even have noticed it unless you're a crocheter or a knitter. I know I did and I loved it. Give a thumbs up if you love finding crochet pieces or knit pieces in movies and TV shows and then try to recreate them at home. And real quick, I want to take the time to invite you to subscribe to my channel if you haven't already and to hit the bell so that way you're notified whenever I post a new tutorial. I share new knit and crochet stitches and techniques every Friday and new patterns every Tuesday so you definitely don't want to miss out. So now, with all that out of the way, let's go ahead and get started. To begin, grab your crochet hook and yarn. I will have the exact materials I'm using listed in the description box below. For Harlequin Stitch, you want to have a foundation chain that's a multiple of 8 and then add an additional 2. So for my demonstration, I am going to chain a total of 26. 24 is my multiple of 8 and then adding 2 gets me to 26 chains. So go ahead and get your foundation chain of 26 started. Okay, I have my foundation chain of 26, and now for our first row, we're just going to do a row of single crochet. So go ahead and count your chains, just make sure you have the right amount, and then we can get started. Starting in the second chain from the hook, we're going to make a single crochet, and we're going to single crochet in each remaining chain across the row. So if you'd like, go ahead, pause here, and do that and meet back up with me once you have single crocheted across your foundation chain. Okay, so I'm just doing my last couple single crochets of the row. And now we're ready to move on to the Harlequin stitch. So turn your work. Begin with a chain one and single crochet into that first stitch. We're now going to skip three stitches and we're going to be going into that fourth stitch. Make three double crochets. So here's one double crochet, our second double crochet. And now our third double crochet. You're then going to chain one and make three more double crochets into that same stitch. All right, one more double crochet into that same stitch. And now we're going to skip three stitches. And in that fourth stitch, you're going to make a single crochet. And now you're going to skip three stitches and in that fourth stitch you're going to do three double crochet followed by a chain one and then another three double crochet into that same stitch. So here is our chain one. 
and now three more double crochets into that same stitch. And now once again we're going to skip three stitches and into the fourth stitch you're going to single crochet Skip three more stitches and in that fourth stitch make three double crochet followed by a chain one followed by three more double crochet. Okay, so we're just finishing up our last double crochet and now we should have four stitches left. You're going to once again skip three stitches and in that fourth and last stitch, single crochet. And this concludes row two, so now we're ready to move on to row three. And right now is actually an excellent time to change color. So go ahead and cut your yarn And we're going to just pull out that last loop of your single crochet and we're going to do that last yarn over with your new color. So go ahead and grab your new color, make a slip knot, slide that knot on your hook. and complete your single crochet. All right, so turn your work and just secure those tails by tying a loose knot. All right, so we're ready to begin row three. To start row three, you're going to chain three and then we're going to complete a double crochet decrease over the next three stitches. So yarn over, insert your hook into the double crochet, draw up a loop, yarn over, pull through the first two loops and repeat that process. Yarn over, insert your hook into the stitch, draw up a loop, yarn over, pull through the first two loops. Yarn over, insert your hook into that third double crochet, draw up a loop, yarn over, draw through the first two loops. Now you'll yarn over and draw through all loops on your hook. The next step is we're going to chain seven. So this is five, six, and seven. So we have seven chains, and now we're going to decrease over the next six double crochets, skipping over that single crochet that's in the center. So we're going to repeat what we just did. So you're basically completing the first half of your double crochet for each of these double crochets. So this is our third double crochet. And now you're going to skip that single crochet and you're going to yarn over, insert your hook into that double crochet, draw up a loop, yarn over, pull through the first two loops, yarn over, insert your hook into that next double crochet, draw up a loop, yarn over, pull through the first two loops, yarn over, Insert your hook into that next double crochet, draw up a loop, yarn over, pull through the two loops, and now we're going to yarn over and pull through all loops on our hook. And that's what it should look like. So now we're going to chain seven. This is five, six, and seven. And now we're going to do the same thing we just did. So you're going to be double crocheting all six of those stitches together, skipping over the single crochet that separates, that separates them in the middle. So 
So we're skipping over that single crochet and going into that next double crochet. And this is our last one for that decrease. And now we're going to yarn over and pull through all loops on our hook. And once again, this is what your work should start looking like. And now we're going to once again chain seven. Okay, so now we just have to do a double crochet decrease over the last three double crochets. And this is going to match the first three double crochets of the row. All right, and now I'm ready to yarn over and pull through all loops of on my hook. And now we'll end the row by making a double crochet into the next and last stitch. And that completes row three. So now we can turn our work and start row four. To begin row four, we're going to chain three and we're going to make three double crochets into that the top of that decrease stitch. So I'll kind of show you a closer look of that. So we're going to go into the top of that decrease stitch and we're going to make three double crochets. So that's one, two, and three. And now we're going to single crochet the chain seven and the chain one spaces of the previous two rows. So you're going to insert your hook into that chain one space from two rows down and make a single crochet. Now we're going to go into the top of the next decrease stitch and we're going to make three double crochets. This is our second. And now our third double crochet, followed by a chain one, and three more double crochets into that same stitch. That's our fourth. This is our fifth. And now our sixth. Now, once again, we're going to single crochet the chain one and the chain seven spaces together. So insert your hook into that chain one space and complete your single crochet. Now you're going to go into the top of that next decrease stitch and you're going to make three double crochets followed by a chain one and three more double crochets. Once again, you're going to single crochet the chain seven and chain one spaces together. So single crochet, and now you're going to insert your hook into the top of the next decrease, and you're going to make three double crochets. If your stitches are tight, it might be a little bit difficult to get your hook in there, but make your three double crochets into that last decrease. I'm having a little bit of a hard time as you can see, but that's all right, I got it. So it's my first double crochet, my second, and now my third. 
Okay, and that's what it should look like, but we still have one more stitch. We're going to do a double crochet into the top of the turning chain from the previous row. So make a double crochet in there, and that completes row four. So once again, this is a great place to do a color change. So I am going to take my hook out and pull out that last loop. Put those two little loops that are sticking up, put that back onto your hook, and we can cut our yarn and then attach our new color. So I like to start with a slip knot. And then I just slide that knot onto the hook and I complete my last double crochet with my new color. So now we can turn our work and go ahead and tie those tails together just so that they're out of the way and secure. And now we're ready to begin row five. So to start row five, we're going to chain four this time, not three, chain four. And now you're going to double crochet the next six double crochet stitches together. And once again, we're going to be skipping that single crochet that separates the two three double crochet clusters. Okay, so now I'm ready to yarn over and pull through all the loops on my hook to complete that decrease. Now I'm going to chain seven, five, six, and seven. And now we're going to do the same thing. We're going to make a decrease over the next six double crochets in remembering to skip that single crochet that's in the center. Okay, so now I'm ready to yarn over and pull through all loops on my hook. And I'm thinking you might have guessed it. We're going to chain seven once again. And you're going to do the same thing you've been doing across this row. You're going to make a double crochet decrease over the next six double crochets skipping over the single crochet in the center. Okay, so now we're ready to yarn over and pull through all loops on our hook. Now we're just about to the end you're going to chain three and we're going to single crochet into the top of the turning chain from the previous row. So go ahead and make a single crochet in there. Might be a little bit tricky to get your hook in if your chain was a little tight. And this concludes row five. We're now ready to turn our work and begin row six. So you'll start row six by chaining one and making a single crochet into that first stitch. Into the next decrease stitch, the top of that decrease stitch, you're going to make three double crochets, followed by a chain one, and three more double crochets. So we've just done our first three double crochets, now we're going to chain one and put three more double crochets into that same stitch. Mm -hmm. 
and next we're going to single crochet that chain seven and chain one space together so insert your hook into that chain one space and make a single crochet and now we're going to place our stitches into the top of the next decrease stitch you're going to do three double crochets again followed by a chain one and three more double crochets Next, you're going to single crochet the chain one and chain seven spaces together from the previous two rows. So make your single crochet in there. And now in the next decrease stitch, in the top of that stitch, place three double crochets, followed by a chain one, followed by three more double crochets. And we're going to end row six by placing a single crochet into that first chain of the turning chain from the previous row. So find that very first chain from the previous row on that turning chain and place a single crochet into that chain. And that concludes row six. So from here on out, you're just going to be repeating previous rows that we have already done. So this is a really great time to pull out the written pattern and I will have a link to the blog post with my written pattern in the description box below. But I'm gonna stick around. We're going to do a couple more rows together just to make sure that you have this skill under your belt. It's definitely not a difficult stitch, but in the first few rows, you definitely do have to pay attention because they're pretty similar, but they do differ slightly. So we're going to start the, new, the next row, row seven, with a new color. We're gonna turn our work. So we're starting row seven, and we're going to be repeating the instructions that we did for row three. To start this row, we're going to chain three, and we're going to double crochet the next three double crochet stitches together. So now I'm ready to yarn over and pull through all stitches on my hook. Now I'm going to chain seven. And now we're going to double crochet the next six double crochet stitches together. Now I'm ready to yarn over and pull through all loops on my hook. We're going to chain seven and now we're going to double crochet the next six double crochet stitches together skipping over the single crochet in the center.
Okay, once again, I'm ready to yarn over and pull through all loops on my hook. So now I'm going to chain seven, and I'm going to double crochet the next three double crochet stitches together. And I'm going to make a double crochet into that next stitch. And now we can turn our work and we're ready to start row 8. Row 8 is just a repeat of row 4. And this is what your work should look like. So to start row 4, we're going to chain three and we're going to make three double crochets into the top of that decrease stitch from the previous row. So here's my third double crochet. And now I'm going to single crochet that chain seven and the chain one from the previous two rows together. So single crochet in there, and now in the next decrease stitch, we're going to do three double crochets, followed by a chain one, and three more double crochets. Now we're going to single crochet the chain seven and chain one spaces together and now we're going to go into the next decrease stitch and we're going to make three double crochets followed by a chain one and three more double crochets. And now we're going to single crochet that chain seven and chain one space together. And now in that last decrease stitch, the top of that last decrease stitch, we're going to do three double crochets. Okay, and now we're going to finish the row by making a double crochet into the top of the turning chain from the previous row. And that completes row 8. And so now we can start row nine. So this is a great place to change color. So I'm going to cut my yarn and I'm going to add my new color. And row nine is just going to be a repetition of row five. So I've added on my new color and now I'm turning my work and we're going to do a repetition of row 5. So for row 5 we start by chaining 4 
and then we're going to double crochet the next six double crochet stitches together remembering to of course skip that center single crochet Now I'm ready to yarn over and pull through all loops on my hook. And I'm thinking you might have guessed it, we're chaining seven. And now we're going to double crochet the next six stitches together. Skipping over that center single crochet. And now we're going to yarn over and pull through all loops on our hook. Chain seven. And now you're going to double crochet the next six double crochet stitches together, once again skipping over that center single crochet. And now we're going to end row nine by chaining three and placing a single crochet into the top of the turning chain from the previous row. And this concludes row nine. So from this point out, you're going to do a repetition of rows six through nine, basically until you're ready to be done with your Harlequin stitch or until the pattern calls for you to stop Harlequin stitch. So I'm just going to do, to round out this little swatch, I am just going to do row six with you one more time, just to make sure you have it. So you start row six with a chain one and you single crochet into that first stitch. In that next decrease stitch, you're going to make three single, or three double crochets, I'm sorry, followed by a chain one and three more double crochets. We're then going to single crochet the chain one and chain seven spaces together. And now we're going to go into the next decrease stitch and make three double crochets followed by a chain one and three more double crochets. Now we're going to single crochet that chain seven and chain one space together. And now we're ready to go into the last decrease space of our row. And once again, we're doing three double crochets followed by a chain one and three more double crochets.
now we're going to make a single crochet into the first chain of the turning chain from the previous row. And that concludes row 10, which was once again a repetition of row 6. So from here on out, you just repeat row 6 through row 9. And there is the Harlequin stitch. So I'm just going to cut my yarn and secure my end. And this is what your swatch should look like. I really hope you found today's tutorial helpful, and if you did, let me know by giving the video a thumbs up. And if you haven't already and would like to, make sure you subscribe to my channel so you never miss a new tutorial. I come out with new stitch tutorials every Friday and new patterns every Tuesday, so you definitely don't want to miss out. Thank you so much for hanging out with me and for watching. Bye!